chapter eight, odd number problems, 17 through 21. These all relate to the concept of power. A sample of 40 is selected from a normal population with mu equal to 75 and standard deviation equal to 12. And a treatment is administered to the sample. The treatment is expected to increase scores by an average of four milliseconds. Power is defined as the probability of accurately rejecting the null hypothesis. If the treatment effect is evaluated with a two-tailed hypothesis test using alpha equal to five, what is the power of the test? This is a multi-step process to answer this question. Again, focusing on the um, concept power, what does that represent? It's the probability of accurately rejecting the null hypothesis. So a couple things we need to begin with um, is the treated, um, the untreated population mean is equal to 75. And we expect that the treatment to increase that by four. So essentially what we're saying is the expected treated mu mu would equal 75 plus four points, which gives us 79. So that's the expected treated population mean. We're going to consider the untreated population first. And what we want to do is determine what the sample mean is at the critical region. Oops, that doesn't look too good. So let's try that again. So we have our distribution. This is representative of the untreated population. So the mean there is equal to 75. I want to find out what um, the sample mean is at the at the critical region. So our critical z is equal to, given the fact that we're working with a two-tailed test, alpha at five percent, and we expect an increase, we're going to use positive 1.96. Okay, so we're going to identify that. I'm going to distinguish this from my z values. Down here we have 1.96. So the first step is let's identify what m is equal to and that sets the critical region. So we often say the critical region z value. In this case we're looking for what sample mean do we need to be greater than to put us out into the critical region here. Okay, so that's the first step. So we're going to solve for m. m is equal to mu plus standard error right, multiplied by our z value. We know some of these, but um, we know for sure we don't have standard error. So that's equal to our standard deviation of the population, 12, divided by the square root of n, which is 40. So 12 divided by the square root of 40 gives us 1.90. So now we can solve for m. m is equal to the mu of the untreated population, 75, plus our standard error, 1.9, multiply by our critical z of 1.96. So if we do that calculation, we should get a sample mean equal to 78.72. Okay, so what we've just concluded is that the sample mean that defines the critical region is equal to 78.72. Okay, so now what we want to do is consider the likelihood of obtaining sample mean with that value from the treated population. So again, here if we have a sample mean of 78.72 or greater, let's say a value of 79, then of course we fall into the critical region because it has less than a 5% chance of occurring. But now my interest lies in the treated population. The treated population, and I'm going to rewrite something um, just so that it's a little clearer for you to see. So this was 78. Hopefully that's a little bit better. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the treated population. I'm going to use red to make the distinction between the two. So if we were to talk about the treated population, we anticipated that the mean of that treated population was equal to 79. 
Okay, so now our objective is to find the probability of obtaining the sample mean that's greater than 78.72 in the treated population. Obviously, the larger that probability then um, illustrates that we are justified in rejecting the null because that sample mean, in other words, is a good representation of the treated mean, treated population mean. I know it gets a little confusing, but stick with me here. So the next step, I'm going to denote this differently. So I'm going to keep writing in red so that we know we're talking about the treated population. So I'm going to convert that sample mean into Z value. So I'm going to take 78.72 and subtract the mu, but again, not the mu of the untreated. Again, my focus at this point is the treated population, which is 79. Standard error does not change 1.9. So if we take 78.72 minus 79 divided by 1.9, we should get a z-score equal to negative 0.15. And that should make sense because here we see the value of 78.72 to the left of the mean of 79 to the left. So we should expect a negative z value. And now our task is to determine what is the probability, probability of obtaining a sample mean that's greater than 78.72 in the treated population. So if we shade the area of interest, it would include all of this. And given the location of that value in relation to the mean, we know we're talking about the body, the body of the distribution. So what we need to do now is go to our unit normal table and find the z-score of 0.15 and report the body. Okay, here we are, a z-score of 0.15 is here, the body is 0.5596. Okay, so we've just determined that this proportion is equal to 0.5596 or 55.96% chance that if we randomly selected a sample of 40 individuals from the treated population, their sample mean would equal 78.72 or something greater than that. So P is equal to the Z value, the probability of a Z value greater than negative 0.15, and we've concluded that's equal to 0.5596, or there's a 55%, 55.96% chance. Again, this is important. There's a 55.96% chance that if we randomly selected a sample equal to 40 individuals from the treated population, their sample average would be greater than 78.72. And that's important because we established that 78.72 was the minimum value needed to reject the null. So this proportion that we just found signifies the power. Power. There is a 55.96% chance that the researcher will accurately reject the null. Okay, I understand this is a quite complex, um, but if you take it step by step, it should be um, easy to solve. Um, we're going to do several more of these. However, um, just by chance, the examples I'll be doing will um, always reflect the body, but I want to warn you that it won't always be the body that you report. It's all dependent on the location of the sample mean that you're working with. So just be conscientious of that, that my examples may only show the body, but it could very well be the tail, and it could be on the left side of the original untreated population mean. So once again, it's essential to sketch out your distribution and follow the step-by-step -step process. Okay, we're going to use that same um, scenario, but what we've changed now is um, applying a, I'm going to change this here, it should say test, a test, hypothesis test, where we have a one tail that alpha equal to 0.05. Okay, so let's see how things are different. 
um, again, we're going to calculate the sample mean that identifies or, or sets the critical region. So we're still working with the mean of 75. And again, the black um, text refers to the untreated population. And we're still expecting a four-point increase, just as we saw in the in previous example. So the treated population will equal 79. But first, we want to identify, given that we're going to conduct a one-tailed test at 5%, our z-score is equal to positive. 1.65. Again, we arrive at that by looking at 0 0.0500 in the tail of the distribution unit normal on table and uh, report the z value. So that's 1.65. We're going to calculate the sample mean, the mean equal to mu plus standard error multiplied by z. We're going to figure out what is the minimum. Um, well, not the minimum, but what is the exact sample average value that separates the um, critical region? So this is now 1.65, and again, the critical region is this blue area. I try to make it a little bit bigger than the last example to signify that a z-score of 1.65 is closer to the center. In other words, the critical region is a little wider, larger. There's a greater proportion of scores in that region. All right, we're um, going to need to calculate our standard error. Um, no change since the last example, so it's 12 over 40, and we get 1.9. And now we're going to calculate our sample mean that establishes the critical region of the untreated population. So that's 75 plus 1.90 multiplied by 1.65. And our mean is equal to 78.1. Four, a little less than the last example because we use this lesser z value, critical z value. All right, so I'm going to replace this with the value of 78, 78.14. Okay, so that's the sample mean that identifies the critical region. Now we're going to talk about the treated population. Again, the treated, uh, the expected treated population mean is equal to 79. Okay, so the red represents treated. If the treatment is effective, we expect that sample means will, if we select sample means from the treated population, they should be close to the value of 79. So now our task is to determine what's the probability of obtaining a sample mean of 78.14 or greater. So probability of a sample mean greater than 78.14. And now, again, we should expect another negative z because we're still to the left of this treat, treated population mean. And it's all of this that we're interested in, this proportion. And again, in this example, it is the body. Warning, it's not always going to be the body. In this case, it is. So just make sure you sketch out your distribution. So z is equal to our sample mean, 78.14, minus the mean of the treated population, 79, divided by our standard error. And we get a z-score of negative 0.45. It's a little further away than, um, this is critical, z, and now this is my z of, of uh, pertaining to the treated population. So a score of 78.14 is the equivalent of negative 0.45 standard error units from the mean. All right, we can rewrite this and say, what's the probability of getting the z value greater than negative 0.45? All right, so now at this point, we just use our unit normal table to come up with our answer. Okay, so in our unit normal table, a z-score 0.45 is here, down at the bottom. Oops. And the area in the body is represented by 0.6736. Okay, so we found, whoops. 
you started on the wrong one. All right, here we go. It's um, 0.6736 or 67.36%. So to answer this statement, again, it was equal to 0.6736 or 67.36. So again, our power would indicate there is a 67.36% um, chance that the researcher will accurately reject the null false null. So again, we establish the sample mean at the critical region. Then we considered if we were to take a sample from the treated population, what is the probability that that sample mean would be greater than 78.14? The probability in this example increased from the last one and the increase because we went to a one-tailed test. And I explained that a one-tailed test, the Z value, the critical Z, is closer to the mean. In other words, that proportion has increased. And when we're trying to calculate power, the body in this particular example also increased. So we should understand the relationship between going from a two-tailed test to one-tailed test. So the power will increase when we move from a two-tailed test to a one-tailed test because the critical region increases and the power um, or the proportion in, to find power also increases. Number 19, explain how the power of a hypothesis test is influenced by each of the following. Assume that all other factors are held constant. So A says increasing the alpha level from 0 0.01 to 0 0.05. Similar to what we did um, previously with the difference of one tail to two tail test in the discussion um, I started regarding the size of the critical region. That's similar here. Let's just um, take into consideration distribution, right? and if we have a two-tailed test um, implemented, the alpha for 5% would be negative 1.96, positive 1.96. Again, this is for alpha at 5%. And if we considered alpha at 1%, then our z values, or critical z values, would equal negative 2.58 and positive 2.58. So the proportion um, that we see in the tail for a 5% 5, 5 alpha from here to here right, is larger than the proportion we see for a one-tail test from here to here. Therefore, if the proportion is, is increasing, if we look at the reverse way, so the Z value 2.58 is further on the tail, a smaller value, right, proportion, let's just um, color this, right, this proportion right here is smaller because that Z value is further out in the tail. The proportion that um, illustrates 5%, right, includes that red area plus this other area. Okay, so if that proportion is increasing, that will have an effect on power. Again, power is the probability of, um, of accurately rejecting the null hypothesis. So what you can simply understand is that if um, alpha set at 5% makes a, a test easier to pass, Therefore, the power is going to increase. Setting it at uh, 1% or 0 0.05 alpha makes the test harder because we need a much larger z value. So to summarize, um, we understand that increasing the alpha from 0 0.01 to 0 0.05 increases power. And the reason is because the proportion 
um, that includes the critical region is larger for 5% than when we use alpha at 1%. Similarly, if we talk about changing from one-tailed to two-tailed, um, if we just think about the critical region for one-tailed test at 5%, let's just consider 5% alpha equal to 0 0.05, that critical Z is 1.65 versus if we used alpha equal to 0 0.01, the alpha, the critical Z is 2.33. So we see again, similar to the last example, the proportion here, right, the proportion here is smaller than here because, simply because the z-score of 1.65 is closer to zero, right, opposed to here, it's further out from zero. Um, so one-tailed, again, is easier. Now if we talk about two-tailed, a two-tailed test, if we use 5% alpha for a two-tailed test, Again, that would be 1.96 positive, excuse me, negative, over here, negative, 1.96, again, we're still 5% over here, versus if we talk about One percent alpha equal to point zero one. This area is two point five eight, negative two point five eight. So just considering the location of the z values in relation to the mu in the center, uh, we see that for two tail tests, the bottom ones, right, those z values are much larger. They're larger meaning that they're further out in the tail, and conversely, or similarly, the proportions in the tails are smaller than when we're working with the one-tailed test. The one-tailed Z values have a bigger critical region, and so therefore changing from one-tailed to two-tailed, okay, so what are the, what's the effect on power? Changing from one-tailed to two-tailed decreases power. Again, the reason because these Z values, right, are further out in the tail in comparison to these, in comparison to those, and therefore we have smaller proportions or probabilities in the tail, and that affects the, the chances of accurately rejecting your null. A two -tail, in other words, a two-tailed test is going to be more difficult to pass than a one-tailed test. Uh, alpha of 5% is an easier test to pass than a 1%. So when I say easier, that means an increase in power. All right, last one. A researcher is evaluating the influence of a treatment using a sample selected from a normally distributed population with a mean equal to 80 and a standard deviation equal to 20. The researcher expects a 10, excuse me, 12 point treatment effect and plans to use a two tailed hypothesis test with alpha equal to 0 0.05. Compute the power of the test if the researcher uses a sample of 16 individuals. So, again, we're going to um, recognize that the mu treated is expected to equal 80 plus 12, which gives us 92. All right, now we're going to determine, given a two-tailed test, two-tailed test, what m is equal to. So here, the untreated mean is equal to 80. We want to find out what is m equal to that represents the critical region. Again, critical z is equal to, since we, we expect an increase in treatment, um, due to treatment, then it would be the positive version of our critical Z, positive 1.96. So we want to solve for M. M is equal to mu plus standard error multiplied by our Z score. 
standard error is required. Our population standard deviation is equal to 20 divided by the square root of our sample size, which is equal to 16. So 20 divided by 6, and we get 5. So now we can solve for m. We have a mean of the untreated population equal to 80, plus our standard error 5 multiplied by 1.96, and we get a, a sample mean equal to 89.8. And again, that's the sample mean that defines the critical region. The critical region. So we want a sample mean greater than 89.8. Again, this is the critical region of the untreated population. So we would want to find a sample mean that's greater than that, which has a less than a 5% chance of occurring, so that we could reject the null hypothesis. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is consider what does the treated population look like. And the, uh, the population, the expected population un untreated, that's this here, is equal to 92. So we're going to put 92 quite, quite a way from right about here. Again, this isn't perfect, um, but just trying to establish that we've got something further from um, 80, right? Close to 89, but much further from 80. So the treated population mean, the expected mean, is equal to 90. Now I want to find out what is the probability probability of obtaining a sample mean that's greater than what the original critical region was established for the untreated population. So I'm going to make that mark, and again, it's this is the probability that I'm interested in. Again, in this example, it is the body. It, may, it will not always be the body, um, but just by coincidence, the examples from the text um, focus on the body, but you may have an example where the proportion is in the tail. Again, as always, um, drawing your, your sketch will help you make the distinction. All right, so now I need to convert that value into z-score. So 89.8 minus 90 divided by 1.9, and that gives me a z-score of negative 1.04. Okay, so we can convert this to probability of a z-score greater than negative 1.04. Again, to determine that, we're going to use our unit normal table. Um, so now we've, we've indicated that, um, again, these were my m values, whoops, m values, z values, and now z value for the treated. So this value of 89.8 is the same as negative 1.04 standard error units below the mean. And now we can find our probability. Okay, our unit normal table, we find 1.04 here, the proportion in the body, and I just um, made it hard to see that, is equal to 0 0.8508, 0 0.8508. Okay, so we found 0 0.8508. So we've concluded in terms of power there is an 85.08% chance that the researcher will accurately reject the null. Again, the power is based on the concept of what is the likelihood that if I selected a sample from the treated population, that sample would be greater than the minimum sample mean needed to reject the null. So in this case, it's what is the probability of selecting a sample from the treated population having a sample mean equal to 89.8 or greater. Technically, greater than 89.8 is what we just calculated. This is a high probability. Therefore, um, it would behoove the researcher to continue with this research. Many times, researchers conduct these um, tests of power to determine if it's worth their time. If the power is low, then 
they recognize the treatment isn't going to be very expected. And again, this is based on anticipated treatment effects, um, but they should have some sense of what, how much the sample mean value would change if it was effective. And here we're seeing a great difference um, between the untreated and treated population mean and um, large probability of accurately rejecting the null hypothesis. Well, some of you may have been yelling at the screen as I, I was doing this, and I apologize. I just realized I, I misplaced my finger on something and was reading the wrong um, values. So bravo to any of you who yelled and screamed. Um, I heard you. <laughs> so I'm going to erase all of this because what my error was, which many of you had probably noticed, and I obliviously kept moving on, was the standard error. Um, the standard error was equal to 5, and I was still using the standard error for a previous problem. It was stuck in my head for some reason. So this is not correct, and therefore all of this um, is not significantly off, but um, not correct as either. So I'm going to start all over, and I sincerely apologize for that. It's getting late in the afternoon. And I've made quite a few videos today. That's my explanation or excuse, however you want to um, see it. So let's start over here, okay? Everything up until this point was um, correct, and I, I messed up when we um, did this, the Z. I don't even know where the 90 came from. I was making up numbers, and I'm so sorry if you were getting frustrated as I just kept talking. All right, so to accurately solve this problem, we have a Z value equal to our 89.8 minus 92, who knows what I was thinking, divided by 5, and that's equal to negative 0.44. So again, check on your calculators with me. That's where I went wrong. Normally, I check these values right alongside of you. Um, and this time I didn't um, in a way of saving time, and I ended up causing myself more time. So, again, our original distribution with the mean equal to 80, we found out what the Z value right, was for the critical region. That was 1.96, and that was 89.8, critical region here. And then we have um, our treated population with mean equal to 92, 92. And we want to find out the proportion of scores in the body. Again, we should um, expect a negative Z because of the location of that sample mean in relation to the treated. Okay, so we just determined that the Z value for when we're talking about the treated population is equal to negative 0.44, negative 0.44. All right, and so again, what is not correct here is this part. Negative 0.44. Now, using the accurate Z value of negative 0.44, we're going to find, in this case, the body and determine the proportion in the body to answer our question. Okay, we enter a Z table and 0.44 is here. The body is 0.67. The body is 0.67. Okay, so this is equal to 0.6700, and therefore the power probability of accurately rejecting the null is equal to 0 0.6700 or 67 percent chance. Again, given what I had stated before, Researchers are going to do this prior to conducting their research. The larger the um, power, the more likely they would go ahead with their research. Um, there's a good chance 
in this case that we would get to reject the null given the location of the sample mean needed from the untreated population to establish a critical region and what that value um, means in terms of a treated population. So again, we can think of this as there's a 67% chance that if we selected a sample from the treated population, that treated sample mean would be greater than 80 point, um, 89 point Eight. All right, last one, 21. So we're using the same um, treatment um, and expected treatment effect of 12 points. What's different in this one is we're increasing N. So we're going to see the effects um, on power given an increase in N. So we're going to, again, identify the untreated to put was treated, treated population mu is equal to 92, right, the 80 plus the 12 percent, 12 points um, anticipated increase. And then as we've done in the previous examples, we're going to determine what the sample mean is equal to at the critical region. We're still using um, Two-tailed test um, at 5%, so an increase we're going to focus on a z-score of 1.96. And we have our population mean of 80. Again, we're going to solve for m here. What is the sample mean that defines the critical region? That's our first objective. So mean is equal to mu plus standard error multiplied by z. And we can replace variables, 80 plus, we're going to calculate our standard error, which is equal to our standard deviation of 20 divided by square root of 25. Again, we increased our sample to 25. So 20 divided by 5, we get 4. And our z is 1.96. So if we do that calculation again, 4 times 1.96 added to 80, and we get 87, 87.84. So we've just determined that this value here is equal to 87, 87.84. And now we're going to consider the treated population. Okay, so we anticipate the treated population to have a mean of 92. 92. And we're going to transform that, that sample mean of 87. 87.84 minus 92 divided by standard error of 4. And we get a z-score of negative 1.04. So again, we're saying that the z-value given the treated population, the sample mean of 87.84 is negative 1.04 standard errors below the mean. That's where that 1.04 was coming from, from that last mistake that I made in the previous example. To determine or calculate power, it's all about this, right? What is the probability? selecting a sample mean from the treated population that would be greater than 87.84. And that's the same as the probability of a z value greater than negative 1.04. And it's the body in this case. Again, the red um, distribution is the treated, the black, the untreated. We're going to use a unit normal table to figure out this. Um, proportion, and um, we probably already know it since I looked it up an error in the last example. Okay, so again, this is 1.04 here. The area in the body is the 0 0.85, 08, 0 0.8508. Okay, so this is 0 0.8508, and we've just concluded that the power, right, equal to um, concluding there is 
and 85.8% chance that the researcher will accurately reject the null. And again, we see that the influence of n, right, increasing sample size increase the power, which should make sense because larger samples produce values that are, um, are more reflective of the population mean. So it should make sense that, that increasing sample size would also increase power as we saw in this particular example.